I'm Titlini Hahn and this is my busy garden. It's really cold and frosty this morning, so I've wrapped up nice and warm with lots of layers. But I'm going to take you back just a couple of hours. As soon as I got up this morning and saw the state of the garden, I thought I've got to capture this. Isn't this beautiful? This really is one of nature's wonders with the frost sticking on the branches and even on the cobwebs. How can you not be in awe when you see something like this? This week I'm in the west of the garden because these apple trees need pruning and the fruit canes and fruit bushes also need my attention. So let's start with the apple trees. Incredibly, there are seven apple trees, well they're more like spindles, along this terrace here. They used to be eight but one blew down last year. I'm just going to start down one end and work along, but the principle is always the same. Remove overcrowding and try and restore shape. Cut back to active buds. things I need to do as well, like this bush for example, pretty as it is, is sheltering the bottom of the tree. So I'm going to have to cut this right back. That's much better. I transplanted these blackcurrants last year and they're doing quite well, but they do need a good prune. The grey wood is the newer wood and will give good quality fruit, while the older wood is brown and will give less fruit this year. I want to remove most of the old wood and thin out the new wood a bit because there's lots of shoots here. I've given them a good prune and you can see that I've really thinned them out, but I should get a good crop of fruit on these this year. This is Soft Fruit City. At the front here there are raspberry canes, there's jostaberries, blackberries and taberries at the back. Last year it was a complete jungle but in the autumn I tidied it up a lot. Now because these were all transplanted last autumn I'm not going to prune them in a conventional way which would simply be to chop out all those that bore fruit. I want to allow the root structure to really get a hold this year so I'm not too concerned about fruit crop. You can see that some of them have clearly survived the transplanting because they've got little shoots on and I can see buds on some of these as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out those canes which have clearly not survived the transplanting and leave the others just to flourish and establish roots and hopefully poke up some new canes next year. Now where I've got a lot of fruiting spurs on a cane I'm going to find the first bud and cut back to there. See this one here? So I'll take the secateurs to that cutting close to the bud. My ties. Take that out. And I'll just take off these old fruiting spurs as well. So you can see I've cut out the dead canes, I've tidied up the living canes, and a dog has magically appeared in the picture. The last bush requiring my loving pruning this week is this blackberry bush. But what I need to do is remove all these fruiting spurs cut back to some really strong buds. Yep, that was pretty brutal. I've removed all the old fruiting spurs. I've got some good strong shoots which I'm hoping are going to bear fruit next year because I love blackberries. Let's play Spot the Rhubarb. Can you see it? Can you see it yet? Shout out when you can see it. It's coming! Here's rhubarb! It looks like I'm going to have another ton of rhubarb again. Oh dog, get out of the way! 
and right next to the rhubarb I've got some bulbs coming up. Also in the long border at the back of the garden I've got daffodils coming up. In fact, they're coming up all along the border. And I've even got some snowdrops coming up, look. There are bulbs under the big apple tree and the first crocuses are appearing too. It may be January the 16th and it may be cold and frosty but it's a beautiful day and my garden's coming to life. See how it develops and join me next week in Titley's busy garden.